Good morning, folks. We'll begin today with a beautiful shot from Hinode, which happens to mean sunrise, via the Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio. I'd like to welcome new viewers and recommend the following videos here on YouTube before commenting or asking questions. We attempt to stay focused on these topics and repeated questions are causing significant stagnation. It will not even take an hour to watch all four. Typhoon Salik has struck Taiwan. There are already reports of casualties and a lot of damage. Totos will roll in as Sol Leak rolls on to China and begins to fade. Meanwhile, across the planet, chances for Chantel's reorganization are dwindling as another low is trying to form in the Gulf at the same time. Euro weather, it's easy this time of year. Just one, watch the weather pop at the pressure convergence. And two, Mediterranean moisture pops thunderstorms. The North Island New Zealand can't seem to shake that one cell, while the Southern Australian system has moved east to Melbourne. Wind map still showing powerful clockwise outward forcing high pressure with an inward pulling clockwise low firmly set in Nebraska and the Dakotas. All that heat, moisture, and energy rushing north to one place should indeed extend up into Canada for the watch zone. Been 12 days without a gamma burst, Sonoma is as quiet as can be along with the cosmic ray readings from Bartol still not updating. This occurs whenever the readings are spiking now. It's not doomsday, but they believe their system is broken, and it couldn't give such readings. Well, dear Udell Bartol folks, for you I recommend Energy from Space 2.0, the part about changing solar magnetics. I say we all focus, or pray, or whatever you wish to call it, that the sun gives us some solar flares we need to expand the atmosphere. Now, no, we don't need the big one, but for two years I have discussed this Earth-facing quiet and lack of solar activity indicative of solar maximum. Let's see if that can change. This sunspot is in development and has visitors trailing behind on the limb, but they all need more magnetic mixing. The focus for three days in terms of space weather has been an Earth-facing filament eruption. Both NASA and NOAA anticipated impact yesterday and late afternoon indeed brought that impact. Solar wind speed spiked near 600 km per second with the densest part of the wave following the fastest particles. You'll remember that coronal hull streams bunch up plasma for a density spike preceding the speedier particles, so this CME is a good comparison event here. And while auroras were sparked at both poles, there was no geomagnetic storm produced, short of general shield instability. We also have gone from a significant electron storm last night to nearly nothing today. Instability and such flux kept in your mind for a moment to add that yet another day has gone without a six magnitude earthquake. We usually get three to four a week, but have had none in the past week. Yesterday offered only unusual location rumbling like here and some minor upticks in activity in South America. But with those two factors kept in mind from moments ago, we now meet the earth facing coronal holes. Big Red didn't look so big yesterday, did he? Southern Corona Hole is beginning to face Earth today, so we shall start the watch, especially with those other factors. Remember, this is not a prediction of a mega quake, just an uptick in six magnitude and higher rumbling as a sign of general planetary instability. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.